Good day, my plant foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today we will be going to big box store plant shopping at the Home Depot off of Lemon Avenue in downtown Dallas. I wanted just to say thank you so much for always tuning into the live premieres. I wasn't able to get one last night, but as you can see, I am trying my very best to get you guys some daily content. So it is the weekend. I was able to get this um, footage for you guys, and I wanted to go ahead and share this um, location. I have never been to this one, but as you can see, this Home Depot has some um, plants that are already on the outdoor section, but we're gonna see what kind of tropical house plants they have in this area so this home depot particularly has a um, greenhouse setting so it's kind of like in between the main store and then their outdoor garden but as you can see i'm going to pan out over here we've got a bunch of monstera deliciosas we've got some majesty palms some dracaena marginata colorama some cordyline and we've got a bird of paradise. We've got a bunch of ficus elastica burgundy. Those are really beautiful actually. And then we have some more sansevierias or snake plants. We've got a Dracaena reiki over there and then some staghorn ferns, some ficus lorata or fi fiddle fig leaf um, right over here. We've got a diphen bachia, another ficus lorata and some hanging baskets of epipremnum arium neon. So we've got quite a bit of plants to look at. These are easy to care for house plants. So that's the thing about big box stores. For anybody that's joining the channel, my name is Richie and I do plant shopping videos daily. And um, I typically feature big box stores, but I've been looking at local nurseries out in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And this one right over here, we're gonna take a look at this. This is a Calathea Louise um, by Proven Winners. This one is for 1998. Um, that one has just a little bit of browning. So the thing about Calatheas is they are a little bit finicky. So you've got to make sure that the water is not tap water. Treadscanthia feeling flirty is right over here. This one is actually what I would consider the um, Treadscanthia nanook. But I mean, they the thing about it is with proven winners, they can patent their own plants accordingly. So they sometimes switch out the names. So that's the thing about house plants. You can get the plant ID, but there might be several names for them. This one though, never really has a different name. This one is a Calathea ornata. One of the more classic Calatheas. Um, I've seen this for quite a while. And then we have right over here, another Stromanthe. Um, this one is at the Stromanthe Trio Star, but this one has more of just the green foliage on it. And that's the thing about um, plants. A lot of people are more interested in plants that are variegated. I don't really mind, um, you know, green plants. I actually think they're gorgeous. And sometimes the simplicity of like the green foliage is all you need in a space. This one is a Thenanthe Gray Star. Look at how beautiful the roots are. Um, these are the hydroponic plants that um, Proven Winners has provided the H2O bowls. Um, and then this one right over here, we have a Dracaena lemon lime. Love the Dracaena lemon lime. Any neon looking um, plants I am all about. And this one right over here has quite a bit of roots in the water. The thing about it is these plants need to either be bought, clearanced out, or they've got to put some water. Otherwise, these plants are going to quickly decline in their health. And that would be unfortunate because they're beautiful plants. I like this um, Dracaena. This is probably my favorite Dracaena of all of the Dracaenas I've featured, aside from the tornado or the hurricane. This is the Dracaena Urban Urchin. I love how it has about four different colors to it. They've got a mint, a neon, a white, and then a dark green foliage. I love the striping of this plant. And this actually um, sizes up. Right over here, we have a Philodendron Rojo Congo in a um, bowl. So I know I mentioned in a previous video that I was thinking about putting a betta fish. I'm definitely not gonna put a betta fish in there. I just thought that it was somewhat of a cool idea, but we already know that those fish do need to re require a little bit more space. Now the large um, bowls like this one right over here, this Setosa Exotica Thenanthe, these um, bowls at Home Depot are um, selling for $29.98. So close to $30. Um, I ended up getting one, a Philodendron Birkins at the Prosper Texas um, Home Depot. It is still um, doing very well and actually has a bunch of new roots. I'll have to do an update on that. And then right over here, this is a um, Ficus Elastica, just a green variety. Look at how beautiful that is. And there is a little bit of red, ye yellowish veining on the bottom of the undersides of the leaves. This one's for $19.98. Um, really nice looking ficus elastica. This one would actually be a vigorous grower just because there's a lot of green, meaning that it carries more chlorophyll. And this one right here is a Philodendron Macaulay's Finale or Prince of Orange. 
not a hundred percent sure guys on the plant id but i will say this is a beautiful philodendron look at the new leaves as they unfurl it's got this bronze orangey um, look to it and then it um, matures to a bright green color now these philodendron uh, right here at least this type of philodendron where it's kind of clumping versus having to climb up a pole are very easy they just require bright indirect light i would say water their um the soil when it is about um 50 dry and you're good to go and then let's see right over here um we have another philodendron birkin love philodendron birkin i wasn't a fan of it a couple years back um, i know that this is probably the most common philodendron you will see in a big box store grocery store just any place that sells plant um, but nonetheless it has very electrifying variegation i love the striping and i've seen it to be highly variegated where the leaves are almost white um, it's also been called the philodendron white measure um, so there's just different names for these plants and um, right over here, we've got some more um, plants that are a little bit larger size. I want to pan over here. So I would say that the plant health at this Home Depot location is okay. It's not dismal, but it's not perfect condition. This one right over here is a Thenanthe Gray Star. Beautiful looking Thenanthe. I definitely need to add this to co my collection. I've been saying that for a while. And this one is for $29.98. Not a bad price for a Thenanthe. As you know, um, larger foliage plants like this take a little while to grow at least the nanthe stromanthes calathea so it's nice to see large foliage plants like this and look at how beautiful that gray is and the veining on the leaves and then we have some more um calathea leopardina i think and then this one is a bird's nest fern i didn't realize that bird's nest fern actually grow very large um and then what else do we have here we have a monstera deliciosa just a typical one but nonetheless it's one of the original sought after house plants couple years back and i still think that monster deliciosa need to stay relevant because they're an easy to care for plant they do get very large and you need to make sure that you plan for the space right over here we have a um, hoya carnosa crimson princess for 1998 beautiful looking um hoya carnosa crimson princess in a hanging basket and then right over here as we pan up we have an epipremna arium golden or a golden pothos so the golden pothos i would tell anybody is the um probably the easiest plant to grow in a house plant collection so for any plant foldies which is what i call my viewers if you're new to house plants and you just discover this channel if you're going to get a first time um, house plant definitely get a golden pothos or any type of pothos they're very easy to care for and then right over here i love 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 pink maroon magenta looking foliage purple foliage this is a cordyline tea plant look at how gorgeous those pink variegation is and then against the like maroon burgundy color and then right next to it is another um dracaena but as you can see tea plants are really nice cordyline plants are beautiful the only thing is they are very very susceptible to spider mites when grown indoors this one is for 16.98 i would tell you um, cordyline plants are better grown outdoors in like a um, patio that is shaded versus indoors unless you can really get provided some humidity to discourage spider mites because it is spider mite prone and then right over here we have some dracaena marginata colorama i love those um the thing about it is they have a little bit browning on the tips of the leaves so they're not quite um healthy and then right over here we have a monstera delicio so this one is okay um and in this one right here, we have a Majesty Palm. Not necessarily a fan of the Majesty Palm, but we see them at every store we visit. And I feature them in pretty much every video. Now this right here is an amazing looking cordyline kiwi or tea plant. Do you see how beautiful the foliage is? The undersides of the leaves have such color um, interest. There are pinks, neon green, green. The stems are a bright pink. And that's actually something that um, interests me is when the stems of the, lee, um, of the plant actually have a different color. I love the pink stems. It reminds me of like aglonema, how aglonema have different stem colors. And this one is a really nice one. I prefer pink stem um, colors or like stark white colors on stems. Those are really cool. And then right over here, we have some large alocasia. Um, these wouldn't you actually typically see at Home Depot specifically. Actually, Home Depot carries very large foliage plants. Like look at how beautiful that alocasia leaf is. And we're going to pan right over here. And look, we have an alocasia, a spathophyllum, or what you call a peace lily, more um, majesty palm, I mean, majesty palms are beautiful. It's just I've heard that they are prone to mealybugs and mealybugs are so hard in terms of a pest on plants to get rid of. 
Um, we have another spathophyllum here that's actually in bloom. That's beautiful right there. And spathophyllum actually, or peace lilies, don't require nearly as much bright and direct light. It can actually um, tolerate lower light conditions. Here is a ficus elastica burgundy. Now with the ficus elastica burgundy, those or any kind of ficus elastica slash rubber tree, they definitely require a lot of bright indirect light. So if you're going to add one of these um, to your collection, you definitely need to give it a lot of bright indirect light. South facing windows would do very well for them. I've actually taken these types of plants, put it out in my front, um, lawn and grown them in full sun in texas weather and they didn't burn they actually thrive so you know take it for what it is and in speaking of another plant bird of paradise bird of paradise requires quite a bit of light and actually indoors um they don't bloom but if you give it so much light they they probably need to be outdoors they will bloom for you so it's you know bird of paradise is one of those very tropical vibe plants and then right over here we have some sansevieria beautiful snake plants um they're fairly easy to care for they can tolerate lower light conditions and um being underwatered. and then right over here we have a dracaena riki what i like about the dracaena riki is it's got low um narrow leaves and then the green on green and variegation is beautiful all of these um size plants are 1998 for anybody curious and then right over here we have a monstera adansonii these are very common looking plants now a couple years back not so much and then right over here we have a staghorn fern by vigoro beautiful looking staghorn fern quite a um quite a large size i'm definitely going to get a staghorn fern at some point in my collection i want to mount it up on like a wooden plank i'm gonna ask my brother-in-law to actually make a wooden plank that's like this um the shape of a monstera leaf i think that'd be super cool and then right over here we have some yucca I haven't really um, grown yucca, don't really know the care tips for yucca. So if anybody has any um, care tips, please leave them in the comments or even in the live premiere chats. And right over here, we have some ZZ plants. ZZ plants are so easy to take care of. They, um, the one thing you don't need to be doing is overwatering ZZ plants. Um, that is basically it. Otherwise, that is. And then right over here, we are looking at some ponytail palms. I didn't realize that ponytail palms are actually succulents. So that's really cool. I was afraid of adding one just because I thought it was a palm and it would require a lot more light. Obviously, um, ponytail palms are going to need um, bright indirect light. Um, it's one of those plants that you will also see at big box stores. They're very common. And in another common plant you will see is a Monstera adansonii. These ones are looking too great. There's some yellowing on the leaves. And then we have some more hanging baskets of pothos. So for anybody beginning their plant journey, definitely get you a pothos or an epipremnum arium, like this beautiful neon pothos. Those are very easy to take care of. And we have some Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess right over here. Um, that one is for $14.98. The same thing with the Neon Pothos right next to it. And even that Palia um, plant right over there or the money tree or the money plant, a Chinese money plant. We have right over here a Ficus Lorata. Um, this Ficus Lorata has a little bit of leaf damage. I'm not sure if there was a pest that got it, but Ficus Lorata, I've been kind of getting into it just because I got one for 99 cents and it's actually growing. It's not being very finicky. Um, I, I do have it next to a, humif a humidifier and right next to a east facing window. Now we're gonna take a look at some of the plants at this Home Depot indoor. So Home Depot has plants like this set up indoors as well. This one is a Calathea mosaica. Not really a fan of it just because if I'm gonna get a Calathea, I'm gonna get one with better leaf interest. That one doesn't really have a lot of leaf interest. And guys, you already know, this is a Hedra Helix, guys. Gold baby Hedra Helix or English Ivy. Um, this one is for $8.98. My Hedra Helix, as I'm doing my um, Hedra Helix challenge, it's actually doing very well. There are no spider mites. It's actually pushing out new growth and it's doing very well. But if you've been to this channel, I always talk about English Ivy and how difficult they are to grow. Many plant influencers have even mentioned it. They're just very spider mite prone when grown indoors. I love Hedra Helix because of the leaf shape and the variegation. So I'm hoping that I can continue to grow mine and let it thrive in my indoor space. Right over here, we have some ZZ plants by um, Nature's Way. These are for $8.98. I like ZZ plants, but if I'm going to add a ZZ plant to my collection, it would be a Raven ZZ, which is what I did. I got one for $7 on clearance at Walmart. And then right over here, we have some bird's nest fern. These are beautiful. I love the texture of the leaves. And then right over here, we have an Aglonema red Siam. Um, you know, this is an Aglonema that is very typical and then um, is often seen at big box stores. 
and then right over here we have a pachira aquatica or a money tree plant this is the braided version this one's for $14.98 by vigoro all of the other planters i've shown you so far are going to be $24.98 if you want to know the price and then we have another staghorn fern for $14.98 and a bunch of sansevieria right here by vigoro these are all for $14.98 now Sansevieria or what they call snake plant the same thing with these easy plants and even this Dracaena marginata they're all very um, low light tolerant so you can grow them in lower light conditions and then this is really cool this Calathea macchiana actually this is not a Calathea macchiana this is a Calathea um, medallion I haven't seen a Calathea medallion in a big box store like Home Depot at this size. Now these are for $29.98 and I was very excited to find larger form Calatheas in this size because they do take a while to grow. I saw a Calathea orbifolia, a Calathea lancifolia, and a Calathea Mar um, Burley marxi and now I have found a Calathea mochiana. Um, I definitely want to get uh, or, uh, you know, a Calathea uh, medallion. I'm sorry, a Calathea medallion. We're looking at a Calathea medallion right here. This is for $29.98. So that is really not bad for such a large um, Calathea. The only problem is with this stock, their their leaves are not perfect. So I'm, you know, a little bit weary about purchasing one, at least at this um, Home Depot. And then we have a Tamathophyllum here. I just always find Tamathophyllum at least at Home Depot or at least big box stores. Their leaves are always have like hard water on it you would think that it's like some kind of pest but it's really just hard water on top of the leaves but we'll go ahead and pan over here at this calathea um and then i'm just gonna walk out here so at least this home depot has some decent plants i wouldn't say that these plants are stellar i'm really waiting to see if they release more plants it looks like you know some other um, places in the country have other um, plants already released out in home depot it is still fairly cold in north dallas but i'm very excited to share you with you guys all of my other plant finds i'm doing my very best to try to get daily videos of big box stores and what's really cool is everybody um, tuning into live premieres um, the plant keeper incorporated video about two nights ago had about almost a hundred people on the, the live chat so that's really interesting i'm really um you know that's one of my goals is to have like maybe a hundred people tune in for my premiere so i just really appreciate that you plant foldies are awesome and i hope you guys like this first location so far do you guys shop at home depot for, for plants um leave it in the comments and let me know the next one right here is just a little commercial break and i wanted to show you how cute these planters are these are frenchy dog planters i featured this in another video but i had to go back to the target and take a look at this these are actually at target locations target does carry um some foliage plants sometimes you'll see some costa farms plants but look at how beautiful these calanchoe are and for this planter it's ten dollars for this frenchie so if you are a fan of frenchies if you have a frenchie bulldog definitely consider getting this because this is ten dollars and it's not bad the calanchoe will grow even after you if the blooms disappear just cut off the blooms and just treat it like a succulent and then we have some more um foliage plants here by wild interiors these are all for $12 so we've got a bird's nest fern a spider not a spider um, plant a syngonium white butterfly over here that's beautiful and then a syngonium neon robusta very nice looking plant we have a coffee plant and then we've got some asparagus ferns we've got some type of stretch um uh, tread scanthia and um, I did want to go pan over here so for those who don't know me or uh, I didn't really realize that this um channel started out as an origami asmr channel please make sure you guys stay tuned to, um, to at least let me show you how to make an origami paper crane so i got the the title of my channel as grow fold the grow part is my plant interest but the fold is my origami interest so i fold um, origami paper cranes every single day i've been doing that for seven years with the goal of folding one million paper cranes someday i would like to make an art installation with it but um origami is a very relaxing um, hobby of mine I've been doing it as a, a child but for the last seven years I have been folding origami paper cranes I have um, you know uh, tubs of origami paper um, cranes and I just wanted to show you just a little quick video on how to fold an origami paper crane in about a minute so I have lower um, slower um, videos of origami asmr so for my plant foldies that um, have tuned into the channel please check that out I have hundreds of them but 
let's go ahead and go back to the main video and this is a big box store plant shopping video for walmart west plano texas i haven't ever really um looked for plants here i've been here before and i remember seeing a couple of plants but now that i'm plant blogging i did want to see if they had a restock if they had some costa farms plants um or just anything of that nature so we're going to go to the outdoor section which they have like a little greenhouse section separate from the main store so walmart actually did um, have a bunch of nice looking philodendron pink princess white princess white knight trending tropical so we're gonna see i am on the lookout for the philodendron tortum but by um costa farms trending tropical so we'll see but i couldn't get into the um that way so I'm, i actually had to walk through the main store at this walmart um, this Walmart is located in West Plano, Texas, right off of the Dallas North Tollway. So um, definitely check that out if you're a, a local Dallas um, local. And let's see, I always like looking at that egg chair right over here. And then these are cool um, moss balls or fake moss balls. Um, that's really, that's actually really cute. Um, they they kind of look fake from, um, you know, close up but from afar they, they look um pretty legit and, and there's not a lot of people here which makes plant blogging very easy so you know that's the thing whenever i'm out in public i try not to get um employees or people in general because i don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable and then sometimes i get a couple of stares because i'm like literally panning in on the plants and um I, I don't know i think some people probably think i'm just like odd for just you know looking at plants and like filming them for a good 20 30 minutes but hey i do it for the love of plants and to make sure that i share with you guys some content so as you can see we have some self-watering planters by trending tropicals um uh, begonia maculata these are actually he very healthy looking begonia maculata there's not any leaf damage and this is another begonia i might consider adding into my collection um very beautiful polka dots on the begonia maculata i remember about two to three years ago those were super expensive but now you can get them for 1984 at walmart this is an Epipremna arium lemon meringue, although on the tag, I think it says global green. This is a lemon meringue just because if you look at it, the leaves have more of a yellowish aurea variegation to it. And I love the self-watering planters. Um, so please make sure you guys buy Trending Tropicals at Walmart. Um, the self-watering planters are amazing. I'm glad that they upgraded from just the ceramic planters. And right over here is an actual Epipremnum Arium Global Green Pothos. Now this one, you can notice it has green on green variegation. I love that. And actually the foliage is a little bit larger than the um, lemon meringue. The lemon meringue um, pothos is actually a mutation from the original global green that um, Costa Farms mass produced. So you can see right over here, there is a little bit of difference. Now my plant foldies, my viewers, what do you guys think? Which one do you like better, the global green or the lemon meringue? Please leave it in the comments or if you're in the live chat, um, let me know what you think. But I love global green. I would say it's in a top four, top five of, of my favorite plants. I would love to see a global green pothos um, grow up a totem pole, a moss pole, because any pothos that grows up a pole will size up in leaves. So it'll get very large leaves. It would be so awesome to see very large green on green variegated um, global green pothos. Global green pothos is its origins actually come from Japan. It was a mutation discovered in Japan. And like three to four years ago, they were super expensive, super rare. And people were um, selling cuttings for like a one leaf, one node cutting for like $50. And yes, I was one of those people that ended up buying one of those um, one leaf, one load cuttings just because I love pothos. And that goes to show that if you just wait a while, every single plant will um, reduce its price eventually as they become more um, readily available to the public. And speaking of readily available to the public, here's a Monstera Peru. This is another Monstera that was actually quite expensive a couple years back. Um, but that one is for now 1984. And then we saw a, a pretty sad looking um, lemon meringue pothos. It looks pretty bare. So I don't know if that was a return or somebody just like took a bunch of cuttings. I don't know. But anyways, we have a, um, a Diefenbachia Camille here. This is by Garden Expert, which is basically the name or of the brand of plants that um, Walmart sells. But it's actually, um, what is it? Actually sourced out by Costa Farms. And then this is another Diefenbachia right over here. I do love the variegation of Diefenbachia. I grew Diefenbachia a couple years back when I had a massive plant collection, but I killed all of them. They ended up just getting very leggy. Um, here is a Dracaena Lemon Lime. 
very nice looking dracaena and the Diefenbachia in this dracaena is for $9.97 in a six inch planter. So it's a very good price if you're looking for six inch planted um, plants, six inch planter, sorry. Um, the best place to go to is Walmart. Like this one right over here is a huge dracaena Hawaii for $9.97. You can see the roots are actually popping out, but look, you get two dracaena and this plant is already um, very large for where what the plant it's in. The planter it's in and they still get larger so dracaena actually um size up pretty good and then we have another epipremnum arium global green pothos these are for 1984 look at how beautiful the green on green variegation is and i am a fan of the self-watering planters by costa farms you guys did really good for, to convert your trending tropical ones now i already know costa farms have had a lot of self-watering planters like this now this one is called um Plants with benefits, we're looking at a bunch of ZZ plants in Sansevieria. All of them are very good for lower light conditions, very easy, don't um, don't overwater them, that's one way to kill them. But these are called plants with benefits. Um, that's like that's Walmart's ver, um, you know, houseplant um, brand name, but it's actually sourced out again by Costa Farms. And then we have another Dracaena Lemon Lime right here for $9.97. Lemon Lime Dracaena, just like a lot of these Dracaenas, do get very large. Um, they are moderate growers. I wouldn't say they're slow growers, but they are absolutely stunning when they mature. They can get up to three to four feet, five feet, maybe even six feet, just depending on your care. And then right over here, we have a Dracaena Janet Craig just compacta this one is a beautiful dracaena that you will see pretty much at any big box store grocery store that one is for 9.97 they can um you know tolerate lower light conditions and what else do we have here we have an epipremnum arium golden pothos this is the pothos or the original house plant that most people start out with and you can see that this the leaves on this pothos is much larger than the lemon meringue and also the global green I love golden um, pothos, very easy to propagate, can um, tolerate lower light conditions. The leaves can size up if you grow it up a pole or if you wanna just grow it in a hanging basket, ill trail. Here is an Aglonema Maria for $14.97, which is a really good price for Aglonema. Love Aglonema Maria. This is probably the third most common Aglonema you'll find, aside from the Aglonema Silver Bay and an Aglonema Red um, Siam. And you can see it's in a self-watering planter. So what you do is you fill the, the reservoir with some water. That wick underneath will pull the water up and just water the, um, the plant. So you don't have to worry about overwatering a plant and getting root rot. And on top of that, you don't have to top water, meaning you um, don't get the water um, surface at the top of the soil wet um, and you know like fungus gnats and pests won't be able to hatch so that's a good thing you want to keep the top soil um, dry to prevent pests and self-watering plant planters um, do really well with that um, what else do we got right over here we've got um, some ficus larata absolutely love some ficus larata over here super um, lush ficus larata these are for 19 something 19 dollars or maybe 24 dollars but nonetheless it's really nice size um, ficus larata and then right over here we have some bingo begonia rex i love me some begonia rex um, and I ended up buying three of them from a local plant nursery called Nicholson Hardy. If you haven't seen that video, please check it out. It is an absolutely stunning um, plant nursery. And then we have a Moon Valley Friendship plant, some type of polia. And all of these are by um, Costa Farms Exotic Angels. These are all for $4.97 in, th in three inch planters. These are nice starter up um, plants. Um, but I love the texture of the leaves here. I believe that this is a polia malleus. Um, the, or the Latin scientific name, but that one will require a little bit more higher humidity. And then we have another Rex begonia here. I love the crimson red um, foliage and then just the um, the dark outlining of this. And then there's even cool um, leaf interest underneath the foliage. So it, you can view it from the top, but if you view it from the bottom, there's some nice leaf veining interest there. And then we have some jade plant here for $4.97. This is actually kind of tiny, so it's called a baby jade. Jade plants are easy. If I'm gonna add a succulent type plant in my collection, I would get a jade, a variegated jade. And then right over here is a pink angel photonia for $4.97. I ended up getting a hanging basket of um, pink wave photonia, the larger leaf form, because I love the very, you know, like the, the venation, pink venation on the leaves. Those are really nice. And then right over here, we have uh, a combination of different types of polka dot plants. This one is actually a finicky plant for me just because they need to stay um, moist. The soil needs to be wet, but you can't overwater them as well. 
because they'll end up getting root rot and then crisp up and die. So it's not as easy of a plant, but it is a beautiful plant. And then right over here, this is super cool. We do have some more philodendron pink princess at this Walmart by Growers Bench. So some Walmarts already are clearancing these out. So these are um, $24.48, but you can find them for $7 if you find the right Walmart. And some of that philodendron pink princess still are uh, maintaining their health. So it's not like, you know, brink of death clearance plan so just if you're in the dallas area definitely check out some walmarts and see if they have them on clearance but this walmart looks like it just got um stocked so it might take a while for them to clear in some of their plants this one is an olympia false aurelia i do have a variegated false aurelia um balfourifonia false aurelia that i rescued from a lowe's and it's actually pushing out new growth so i'm super happy this one right here is an Epipremnum REM Pearls and Jade. Love the Pearls and Jade. Very nice looking one. And then we have a Superbia Fetonia right over here. It's got a larger leaf size. Um, definitely like that. That one is for $4.97. So all of these exotic angels plants are doing very well at this Walmart. They're fairly healthy. So I would be confident in buying the plants here. And then right over here, we have another Philodendron Pink Princess. Nice looking variegation. Um, it looks fairly stable. So with Pink Princess, now that they're readily available, definitely make sure to pay attention to the quality of variegation because Pink Princess, their pink variegation is based on the original genetics of the plant and it's not so much light. Um, here we have a Croton Petra. That's a very common Croton. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I actually like it. I have um, one that I'm going to add to my collection soon. Epipremnum aria mandula. So now this is what you consider a plant find at a big box store. So mandula pothos are hard to find. They're a little bit more uncommon, but for $4.97, that is not a bad looking starter plant for a mandula pothos. If I ever find in a Costa Farm exotic angels hanging basket of um, mandula pothos, I will buy that up uh, um, so quick just because you, you can't go wrong with the mandula pothos. I would tell you mandula pothos is probably my favorite pothos of all time. I mean, my pothos um, favorites change from, you know, day to day. So who knows? But the thing I like about mandula pothos is the leaf shape. It's got a rounder, more circular leaf shape. And when you grow it up a pole, guys, it really does size up in leaves. Like the leaves get huge. Um, if you didn't see the Plant Keeper Incorporated video, Nursery Tour, check it out. And you will see what I mean with a pothos that grows up a pole, that neon pothos started fenestrating. So, yeah. And then right over here, we have another Rex Begonia for $4.97. This one's actually a beautiful one. I've been seeing this particular Rex Begonia at grocery stores, big box stores. I actually want to add it to my collection just because look at the metallic sheen it, it has. Um, it looks like um, metal, actually. The leaves look like metal foil. And it's just really beautiful. I love the... Um, the color on that one and then we have another false aurelia right over here this one's beautiful for $4.97 so I would love to add some more aurelia there's just a lot of plants I would love to add I mean Costa Farms does such a great job providing us with different types of plants with different colors textures growth patterns and it's just so easy to just want to collect all of them and then this one right over here is a Dracaena godsifania um, or yeah, Florida Beauty. I love this just because look at the speckling um, variegation on it. I actually ended up finding one at a Walmart out in Louisville, Texas. So I have this, but look at how the roots are super healthy. It's actually super root bound. Very easy plant as well. And then this plant also can um, tolerate lower light conditions. Obviously, provide it with more light because you want to, um, you know, encourage that speckling variegation. Now, if you guys um, collect plants, do you guys just go to like big box stores and buy all of these exotic angel plants? Like, do you collect like all of the Rex Begonia, all of the Sansevieria, all of the Aurelia, the Dracaena? I'm just curious because it's so easy to just go in and buy all of that. I mean, they're all nice looking plants. And in speaking of nice looking plants, here's a beautiful Alocasia Black Velvet by Growers Bench. Um, these ones are around the $19 range. I was able to find um, a couple of them on clearance already at Walmart for $7. Like here is another... Um, Alocasia, that's an Alocasia Pink Dragon. And then I actually like this Alocasia of all of the Alocasia at Walmart so far. And this is the Alocasia Milo. I love the leathery, thick texture of the leaves. Absolutely stunning. Um, and these are um, just 
they used to be very uncommon and um very pricey and so now it's awesome to see them in big box stores now with alocasia they are spider mite prone and they do require a little bit more um, humidity but the ones i have so far are doing well i have a miniature humidity um, humidifier next to the um alocasia and i haven't seen any pest and or browning or anything of that so they're growing their best life right now alocasia do require bright indirect light to be um happy but i did want to pan over here and show you guys look at how beautiful all of these plants are we've got some bromeliads and obviously i always recommend walmart to get your anthuriums look at how beautiful these anthuriums are and these the large ones i think are for like 20 dollars, and the smaller ones are going to be for like 14.97 um, but look how beautiful they are and then this one is actually the best looking alocasia pink princess although some people say that it's an alocasia pink dragon i think they're the same um alocasia what i like about this is look at the, how narrow the leaves are look at how the venation of the leaves are there and then just the pink stems i love plants that have different um stem colors especially pink stems i'm going to go put it right next to the other alocasia right there and then we have an alocasia i believe this is an actually let's look at this this is an uh, uh philodendron ring of fire so this one's not the best quality of ring of fire i saw some that were a little bit more healthy looking and larger by growers bench but this one is for 24.48 um they are definitely available at walmart and even grocery stores like heb um so you know what used to be a very uncommon plant or rare plant is now very um, easy to find at big box stores and right over here we have a philodendron white princess and the way you can tell a philodendron white princess versus a philodendron um, white knight what i've been told is you can look at the stems and you can see that um, the the stems will have pink margins or stripes versus white if it has white then it is a white knight now a philodendron white wizard is one that has like the white variegated but only has green, green, green stems and it doesn't have like white or um, pink uh, margins. So just a little, you know, tidbit about that. And then we have some more anthuriums here. I want to add an anthurium, but there's another anthurium I want to add. It's a variegated one. It's called a shibori. Um, it's uh, It costs about $100. I saw one on eBay listed, so I don't know if I want to put out that kind of money just yet. But this one right here is actually a cool anthurium. Do you see what I see? This one has like dark foliage and the, the blooms have a different um, color. So it's got dark and then like some pink in it or some um, peach. I do love dark foliage plants. Like look at that. That's su super cool. Like I would get this dark foliage plant and put it right next to a ZZ Raven or a Philodendron Black Cardinal. I do want to do a video specifically featuring my black plants. I think they would be cool. And this is one I would buy for $14.97, but I'm really trying to limit my budget. Like just imagine going to big box stores, grocery stores and looking at plants. And then for somebody who has a plant addiction like me, you could easily, easily go broke. So I'm, I'm, I've been very good about not buying plants. We'll see how that lasts. You know, maybe tomorrow I'll buy a bunch, but we'll see. But as you can see right over here, though, we have some bromeliads. This was a pineapple bromeliad. And this one is also for, uh, I think, $19 or something like that. Um, this one is by um, wild interiors so wild interiors is the same nursery as growers bench which growers bench is the one that's releasing all of those more uncommon rare philodendron this one is actually one of my favorite diphenbachia and this is a diphenbachia sparkle i was able to get the plant id look at how beautiful the variegation is what i like about it is the variegation is very much high contrast we've got some dark green next to the neon green and it's a beautiful Diefenbachia. I will add to this, um, add a dif this Diefenbachia in my collection. Um, there were some for fourteen ninety seven, this size at um, low. So I'm definitely going to get that. But look at how beautiful this is. Now with Diefenbachia, again, you need a lot of bright indirect light. They're a little bit um, harder to grow because if you don't give it bright indirect light, the leaves will, I mean, the, the plant will get very leggy and then it's also spider mite prone. So you just have to stay on top of it and make sure you examine the Diefenbachia. But as you can see, we've got some majesty palms right over here. Um, that's just a very common plant. I'm not necessarily a fan of it, but you know, for, for somebody who has large space and wants a palm, you can get a ma majesty palm. And then right over here, we have a beautiful peace lily or a spathophyllum. I am a fan of like the peace lily when it's in that large form just because of the texture of the leaves. And you can see we have a Skindapsis trubii moonlight right over here by Costa Farms, another global green pothos. 
in these self-watering planters. Those are all for 1984 and look at this right here this is a beautiful calathea medallion so at that um, home depot we visited we saw the larger form calathea medallion so you can see how large they can get these are actually not bad for calathea these are actually very healthy looking there's no leaf damage and these are all in self-watering planters for four, fourteen ninety seven. dollars and we have another dracaena um, right over there and then we have another spathophyllum right over here those are all I, I believe like within the 19 dollar range and then right over here we have a zz raven beautiful looking plant at trending tropicals by costa farms i love the raven color the black color of it and i was super excited to get a plant that looks pretty much like this for clearance for seven dollars at the walmart out in north mckinney so i'm super excited about that but um i ended up getting two actually one i brought to work one i have growing in my home and then we have some aglonema red siam you already know if i'm going to do a big box video i have to feature that please guys consider getting you some um, aglonema so we can like create a bigger demand for that so we can get more varieties of aglonema they're so easy to take care of all you need to do is not overwater it they can um, tolerate lower light conditions as well and then right over here we have a beautiful monstera deliciosa look at how large the leaves are and that's actually not a bad looking monstera deliciosa for a big box store one and then we have some type of dracaenas right over here i'm gonna pan over and do you guys notice there's nobody shopping in this area so it's super easy for me to plant blog and right over here we have a bunch of Philanopsis orchids, these orchids, I know that I basically see an orchid every day just because I, I, I'm in, in a grocery store at a big box store every day. Now with um, orchids, you don't want to overwater them. So I said like water them once a week, actually maybe only water them every two to three weeks. If that, um, you'll know because the, um, the, the roots will turn from a silver color to a green color. Um, the one thing that will kill a um, Philanopsis orchid is if you overwater. So just FYI, sorry for um, telling you guys to water them one, um, once a week. So thank you for the plant foldy. They um, gave me that um, correction for plant care. And this is why I love having our um, plant community grow. There's just so many people that tune in and give us like plant care tips. And it's just a very positive plant community. And that's what I like. Um, and right over here, I also like seeing hanging baskets of exotic angel plants by Costa Farms. This is a Hoya right here. And these um, hanging baskets are all around the $19 range. Look at how beautiful this Hoya is. Nice, um, lush and full. So for the Hoya fans, I'm trying to get some more Hoya during my um, plant videos. And right over here, we have a Fetonia pink wave. That's really look um, beautiful looking as well. Absolutely stunning plant nice um variegation and this one i already ended up getting at lowe's on clearance actually i got it for like ten dollars what i liked about it is just how large the leaves are in the pink venation and in this one looks very happy look at how beautiful the um the blooms are those green things are the blooms so it's a happy looking plant for sure and right next to it there is another uh, fetonia hanging basket it is the white version and this one is um what, what is the plant ID for this um, Fetonia? This one is the Stripes Forever Fetonia. Um, I like this as well. Look at how beautiful the veins are on the leaves. And this one is a large leaf form Fetonia. Now with Fetonia, they do require a little bit more um, higher humidity and they want to keep their soil a little bit more moist. You don't want to really let them completely dry. Otherwise, they will crisp up. And then I'm just going to pan over here and show you guys an Epiprimnum Arium Neon Pothos. Beautiful looking Neon Pothos. Look at that. I actually ended up getting one that was a little bit more perfect than this one. The leaves here have some type of imperfections. But nonetheless, if you pull it out, look at how neon and yellow it is. This would definitely provide a lot of... Um, you know a focal point in a, a lower light condition just because it can tolerate lower light conditions um so definitely get one of those i think that the hanging baskets by costa farms are the best value and then right over here we have a staghorn fern just a, um, a regular staghorn fern um i definitely want to get a staghorn fern but i don't want to like grow it in a hanging basket i definitely want to plant um put it on a plank and uh, you know put in one of my walls and display it that way and then right over here guys we have another hedra helix spear point ivy nice looking ivy right here um it definitely has a very pointy um shape to its leaves and then we have a bunch of rainbow moss here and then we have a skindapsis right here i do like that 
very nice looking skin, skin dapsis. So the only thing about skin dapsis is they are slower growing. You know, they've been known as the silver pothos, but really they're in a different genus and species. So they're not an epipremnum aria. And then we do have a bunch of hanging baskets of epipremnum over there. I do want to show you guys this. This is such a cute little cactus. This is called a cuddly cactus. And I think it's for like 1987. And then we have some more Kalanchoe right over here. I've been looking at Kalanchoe at all the stores I've visited. And that one has red blooms. Kalanchoe are actually um, succulent type. So when the blooms disappear, you just have to cut off the... Um, the blooms and grow it like a succulent it'll eventually rebloom and i did want to show you this little um this little palette of plants by costa farms this shipper right here of exotic angels these ones are a little bit more expensive because they have the white modern planter instead and these are for five 48 this one is another rex begonia look at how beautiful that is um, for five um 48 and then this one right here is an epipremnum arium enjoy um, some people are calling this the pearls and jade but i don't think this is a pearls and jade in this for the simple fact that it has more like um sectoral variegation and then right over here we have a trade scanthia or an inch plant the thing about trade scanthia is they're easy to propagate the only thing is they get very leggy so you definitely need to pinch it back in order to keep it full and then we have another photonia here a mini white photonia for 548 look at how beautiful the leaves are i love the texture these would make great terrarium plants and same thing with um the the begonia and then right over here we have a classic marble queen pothos or epipremnum aria marble queen this one actually has some very good variegation um the thing about marble queen pothos is in order for it to remain you know keep its variegation you do need to give it a lot of bright indirect light the less light you give it even though it um you know can tolerate lower light conditions it will start to revert and give you more green foliage versus that beautiful cream white variegation that the marble queen has you'll get more marbling variegation if you give it higher bright indirect light so that's just a little tip for me it's a classic pothos and then right over here this is a very common um croton gold dust for 548 i have a i have one in my collection um i got it for 50 percent off at callaway's nursery it's, it's the large one and then right over here we have a Diefenbachia camille look at how beautiful that um, leaf is um, you know Diefenbachia camille can grow large but you do have to give it a little bit more bright indirect light and then this one i thought was really cool this is a peperomia um, um, guinea or they call it jelly but look at how the the pink um, leaves are or like the pink um, margins are on the leaves just the edges are really cute and then this is a nice looking um, green prayer plant this is actually a really cute looking plant for 548 and i love the um the texture of the leaves it looks like somebody took a brush and like brushed those like dark brown um patterns on it and then right over here we have a mame croton i like the mame croton for the um the leaf shape and the curling if you give it more light you will get better um coloration on croton so that's more of like light influence for their foliage and then right over here we have a um, fluffy rough uh uh fluffy roughy um fern that's really cute for 548 so costa farms is outdoing itself by just giving out a lot of exotic angels i'm hoping they will release even more um this year i mean we're only into february and we already have a lot of plants i'm curious to see when spring comes around when things warm up when plants are going to be easier to transfer and i'm hoping for all of my you know plant foldies that are up north or in the east coast where it's still very cold at least you will see potentially what plants you may get so thank you guys always for tuning into my live premieres i hope that i can bring you guys a lot of joy because plants give me a lot of happiness and in just even interacting with y'all and giving you guys um content daily it brings me a lot of satisfaction just because i feel like it's appreciated by so many people i'm hoping someday that we will continue to grow the subscriber count the viewership and really educate people about you know growing plants indoors and really having a supportive plant community that's all, what it's all about and i don't know it's just it's been cool so far to be able to meet and interact with you all of my regulars on my live premieres you know who you are i really appreciate you guys tuning in and i do apologize for not being able to get a live premiere i meant to um, premiere this video but i had some issues with the editing and i didn't want to like just use up my friday evening to edit videos but i did want to point out these right here beautiful looking epipremnum arium lemon meringue i definitely will buy one of those i have cuttings but it's taking a while for them to really root so 
we will see if those are all for $14.98. But plant foldies, if you haven't already followed me on um, Instagram, please follow me at, um, at growfold. That's one way to get in contact with me directly. Send me a DM, leave some comments on some of the photos of plants I put. And the last um, what place we're going to visit is a grocery store plant shopping video at HEB Frisco. So HEB is a local chain of um, Texas grocery stores. They are um, they started out in Houston, but have made their way up to the Dallas area. And people are loving HEB. We um, HEB actually features a lot of locals, locally sourced, um, gro you know, goods, groceries, and even plants. And I did, I've never been to this one. So we're going to see what kind of plants they have. A little birdie did tell me that they ended up getting a restock of plants. So I'm really excited. So HEB ended up getting some Monstera Thai constellations. Um, what else did they have? They have Philodendron White Princess, White Knight, Philodendron Pink Princess, and they were sourced out by Max and Miles, which is basically the HEB plant um, indoor name brand. So we're going to see what kind of plants they have here. But as you can see outdoors, um, they already have some of their outdoor plants, plants that can grow in Texas weather. So that's really cool. I love um, how HEB caters to just local Texas. And, you know, for anybody who's really pro Texas, HEB is the grocery store to shop at. Like we have some camellias right over here. And I love HEB's plant prices just because they're very much inexpensive, cost effective prices. I think you get the best value for it. And you can see my silhouette there. So without a, um, you know, face reveal, you can at least see what I might look like. Um, my shadow right over there. So um, eventually I will... I will show my face on YouTube, but um, this is the, the thing that I was talking about. Look at these ficus lorata. Like, are you serious? It is on sale for $45, but look at how large these ficus lorata are. Even Home Depot doesn't have prices like this for ficus lorata or fiddle fig, um, fiddle fig leaf um, trees like this. Look at this. Wow. $45 guys like plant foldies if you wanted to get a fiddle fig would you buy that at Home Depot that's a really good price and they still have more that they have to like unbox from these pallets that's super cool and then it looks like they have some cactus right some Christmas cactus also um over there but look at how beautiful these ficus lyrata is you know like I I can't believe it $45 for a large one I got one for 99 cents at Sprouts and I thought that was a good deal, but $45 is great. I did want to show you guys this Bougainvillea um, Raspberry Ice. Uh, this is a variegated Bougainvillea. I love Bougainvillea just because of the foliage and also just the, the leaf. I mean, not the leaf, but the, the blooms. But um, to go back to this, this is what I wanted to feature is these Ficus Lyrata. $45? Are we, are we serious right now? Like, look at that. And what I like about Ficus Lyrata is back then they used to be like the it plant like a lot of interior design featured them um they're not as popular anymore um they are a little bit finicky i think with the right li um, lighting conditions you definitely need to have a large space because clearly they grow large like this um they are a moderate grower you do need to give it a lot of bright indirect light when you take a ficus lorata into your home you need to put it in a space where you're not going to move it around a lot because what happens is when you move a ficus lorata from like one corner to the, to the other it becomes unhealthy happy and starts to drop its leaves so you definitely don't want to do that you also want to stay consistent with the watering so like you definitely want to make sure that you water it like maybe once a week you don't want to over water it but you don't want to go like once a week to once a month because this will also um shock the plant or it just likes consistency let's just put it that way these ficus lorata like consistency but look at how large they are i can't believe it and I love how large the leaves are. They are a very stylish plant. Like I can see this plant in a home that has high ceilings, bright indirect light, like a bunch of windows and like just a lot of like white furniture. I just think that would be so beautiful to look at. And I did want to come back out here and show you these um, Encore Azalea. So I love Azalea. I'm thinking about indoor azalea. I haven't been able to successfully grow Encore azalea outdoors. They just end up dying on me. I think it's just because I don't have enough like shade. But nonetheless, I will um, feature my outdoor garden eventually. But these are shrubs and plants that can grow outdoor in a Texas setting. So if you're looking for, you know, native plants or plants that can tolerate the Texas weather, definitely go to HEB. But yeah, the ficus lorata, that is definitely a plant find. I would definitely encourage any plant foldies who want to large leaf, large developed, full-blown tree to go to HEB. $45 for a ficus lorata right over here. 
absolutely stunning i love it love it love it love it so much and what's really cool about ficus lorata is if you give it some leaf shine it really has it, it's just a statement piece and it's one that i would highly encourage anybody to get just because look at how beautiful the leaves are large leaves now we're just going to go over here and it looks like there's a palette of um, plants. So the thing about HEB, this local Texas grocery store, is they do get restocks at least twice a week for plants. And as it's warming up, they're going to get even more plants. Um, since it is a grocery store, my plant foldies, um, I will show you guys just more of the blooming flowering plants. Now for those that are here for the aeroids, there's not nearly as many aeroids, but you will find some interesting ones. I did want to show the cyclamen. I love it. The, the foliage is really nice. And then these chrysanthemum, at Trader Joe's, they actually had them called the New Year's chrysanthemum. Look at how beautiful the yellow leaves are. I mean, not yellow leaves, yellow blooms are. I've been talking for about an hour, so um, my mouth is starting to get dry, but they are beautiful. And then we also have some cyclamen right over here, more cyclamen right over here. And then this one right here is an interesting looking plant. Um, look at that. It looks like some kind of sea urchin or some type of shell. The blooms are really nice. Um, I don't know the care tips for it, but I will assume that a plant like this, if you're going to grow it indoors, needs a lot of light. Um, just because it's flowering. So any plant that has a flower requires a lot of energy and you need a lot of like photos. The, the plant needs to photosynthesize basically. And then right over here, we have some ficus elastica burgundy for $12.98. So it is a penny cheaper than Trader Joe's. I said that Trader Joe's had the most cost effective ficus elastica or rubber trees. Actually, HEB beats um, Trader Joe by just a dollar. I will say Trader Joe's, um, Ficus elastica are a little bit larger, but nonetheless, I mean, these are still nice looking ones. And then this one is a ficus elastica ruby. Look at how beautiful the, the leaves, the leaf color are. I love that as well. The only thing is with the ruby, you definitely need to give it bright indirect light for it to remain um, that ruby color as it grows its leaves. Very nice looking one. Um, it's just, it's gorgeous. Ficus elastica are beautiful and they're easy to grow if you have the right lighting conditions um, and they're easy to propagate as well. You can actually trim them and make them more bushy, making them more like a tree form. Um, that's what I'm about to do with my ficus um, elastica burgundy and I have a ficus elastica, no, no, a ficus, um, what is it? A ficus audrey. Here is some more of those chrysanthemums. I just wanted to go zoom in and show you guys how beautiful the blooms are. Those yellow blooms are so gorgeous. It just reminds me of spring. Spring is just around the corner. And with spring, we already know we're going to have a lot more plants available to look at together. So um, what else do we have? We have some Riger begonia. So I've been on um, about these Riger begonia. I would love to grow them. I would just love to grow some flowering plants indoors. I really don't have any. Um, the first one I'm going to add is an indoor azalea. I will buy it at Nicholson Hardy, but for a Riger begonia, I definitely am going to buy it either at Kroger, which is another grocery store in Texas or an HEB. We will see. So um, speaking of plants, so Max and Miles is the official like plant provider for HEB and they have a bunch of Max and Miles orchids. These are all Philanopsis orchids. So you can't go to a big box store, a grocery store, even a convenience store and not find some orchids. I've seen those as well. These are beautiful Philanopsis orchids and I love how they have them on a trellis to kind of train them to like cascade. Um, very nice looking Philanopsis orchids. Um, you know, the care tips, again, you just need to make sure that you are not over watering them. Maybe water them every two to three weeks. Get them a good soak. Um, definitely don't let their roots sit in water because they will die. And some bright indirect light is all you need. Now, somebody had asked how long these blooms last. They can last for up to two to three months, depending on your care. And you can get them to rebloom as well. So once the blooms are gone, you just want to cut off the spike and then just let it go dormant. You can fertilize it with some org. Um, some orchid fertilizer they have the liquid um you know forms where you can just kind of pump like a couple of drops in just follow the directions and you can get your orchid to rebloom again and then right over here we have some daffodils those are beautiful and then i just want to pan over here again and show you guys cyclamen i know cyclamen are a little bit more um, difficult to grow or based on what everybody has commented but you know i wanted to show you that and then right over here we have some assorted succulents 
Now this video is getting a little bit long, so I am gonna end this by just letting everybody know that this weekend I will be visiting a lot of Fort Worth um, local nurseries and then just featuring some more plants. So stay tuned for that. I will um, try to premiere these videos and get them scheduled. But for all the plant foldies, as always, this is Richie at Grow Folds. Thank you for watching my video. Please like, subscribe, get the notification bell on, comment, and I will see you on the next video. Bye.